Hey YouTube, today I just wanted to walk through this track that I've made recently and kind of describe or discuss, I should say, what it started as and where it ended up. And this is the final version or, you know, touched wood, uh, final arrangement, I might say. Maybe there's some more mixing to be done. Um, but it did not start this way. In fact, it started quite differently. Um, so let's just have a quick listen to some of it, <laughs> then we'll go back and have a, have a look at uh, what it started as. Let's flick over to the very original Ableton session and you can just uh, see how different it is. All right, let's check it out. All right, here we are. Uh, I do have a little arrangement here. It's very sparse. Uh, it's all over the place. It's actually over seven minutes long, whereas the other track, the final version or the final arrangement is about four and a half minutes. Um, but this isn't where it started because I always start my tracks almost always in um, the session view and uh, It started with VCV rack Which it's not always the case But uh, in this case it was and I wanted to I don't know I guess I just wanted to like uh, play around with some sound design and uh, I ended up with this keyboard sound so let's have a listen to that let's bring the filter up and this uh, VCV patch just bring it up here it's pretty basic all vault modules mostly. I've got some macros down here, which I think you can see on the screen. But the key point about all of this is that this is, these are not the chords in the final version of the song. Like, they're similar, but they are different. It's a longer, more languid kind of vibe. Um, but then I ended up recording, uh, or just like playing in these chords. Which then became the basis for the whole track after that. But, but originally, it was a combination of these two sounds. This one over here, and this one. And 
I really like this, and I am actually going to turn this into another track. And that's kind of the lesson in all of this, and this happens to me a lot, and I just kind of wanted to address it very quickly, is that an idea can happen, and then the track can turn into something else, because you get all gung-ho and excited about it, um, and you create all of these other parts. Like, I've got all these parts here. Um, but it ended up centering around this one chord, or sorry, this one chord progression, which then just sort of became much more infectious than the other one. And I just wanted to follow that to its conclusion. But these chords came a bit later, like after I'd done a lot of other messing around with all these other parts, I've got parts in this which didn't even end up in the final piece, and then there are parts in the final piece which I then added much later in the process. Um, so just as an example of that. That is the bass from the, uh, the final track, but the original bass was playing different notes. But then I also had this bass in here, which just didn't end up in there. And by the way, I'll just bring it up here. I'm going to do a video on this at some point, but this is, um, this is the virus basically, which is a synth that I used to own, um, without getting into too much details. This is a software version of it. Uh, it's kind of a bit of a weird one because, um, you know, if you're familiar with like emulating um, old video games with like ROMs ripped from the um, the video game cartridges and such, that's basically what this is, but for a synth. Uh, I'll discuss that more in another video because it is very cool and the virus is a really amazing synth, but I just wanted to touch on it here. Um, but then I also had these drums, which I brought in. Let's just um, listen to them. This is like vastly different to what I ended up with. And in fact, the part that I ended up with and ended up using as the basis for most of the rest is this. Which, uh, with these parts as well. So this is, this is basically the final beat. I did edit it a bit. But yeah. I think that'll probably do it for this video, but I guess I just wanted to sort of talk about how drastically different things can change. Like this, this isn't in there, you know? What have I got here? This didn't end up in there either. And these are cool parts, like cool little loops. They could be an, a whole other song, the basis for a whole another, other song. And then, what's this? This chord, these chords, or this instrument, I think, did make it in, but they were playing different chords, I think. Or the same chords, but uh, maybe shortened to go along with this. Perhaps even shorten more. Yep, that's the final version. So I just shortened, shortened what I had, and it turned it out turned out better. So it's just crazy how much things can change through the process of creating. And um, I guess I just want to put the message out there: like, don't be discouraged. You know, like, let the journey take you, or let the track take you on a journey, take you where it it wants to go and just let it happen. Like, uh, allow, allow the song to take you where it wants, you know? Um, because if you try to force it into some pigeonhole that, I don't know, you want it to be in rather than what it wants to be. Um, and I know that's a little bit, uh, vague or a little bit, um, philosophical, but I think it's very true. Um, so anyway, that's kind of, all I wanted to talk about. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.
Thank you.